Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is a very special video for me because this is my first video after reaching my first 1000 subscribers and thank you to you all. Also, this is my first video with a requested content. Our lesson for today is all about measures of central tendency. Now, if you are thinking which branch of mathematics this is connected to, it is on statistics. And when we talk about statistics, the first lesson that you are going to tackle in statistics are the measures of central tendency. Now, imagine that you live in a small town where most of the people are employed by a factory and earn minimum wage. One of the factory owners lives in the town and his salary is in the millions of dollars. If you use a measure like the average to try to compare salaries in the town as a whole, the owner's income would severely throw off the numbers. Next, consider that you are checking your elementary report card and you see your average. That number represents the total grades received divided by the number of subjects. A measure of central tendency is a single value that attempts to describe a set of data by identifying the central position within that set of data. As such, measures of central tendency are sometimes called measures of central location. They are also classed as summary statistics. Statistics analyzes and interprets large sets of numbers. To make the lists of data more comprehensible, central tendencies are calculated. A measure of central tendency points the statistician towards a centralized, repeated, or average number. There are three different ways to calculate central tendency. Each reveals different information about the number set. Yet, each method uncovers an important value and each is used extensively by mathematicians to make sense of data. The first measure of central tendency is the arithmetic mean. The mean, or average, is the most popular and well-known measure of central tendency. It is equal to the sum of all the values in the dataset divided by the number of values in the dataset. So, if we have n values in a dataset and they have values x sub 1, x sub 2, and so forth, the sample mean, usually denoted by x bar, is equal to x sub 1 plus x sub 2 plus x sub 3, and so on, all over n. Or, x bar or the mean is equal to the summation of x over n. For population mean, only the symbol for mean changes, but we will follow this same procedure. Now let's have an example. Find the mean of the following data set. This is the data set. 56, 35, 45, 67, 12, 24, 48, 55, 58, and 30. Solve for the mean, that is the summation of x all over n. So in layman's term, we just add all the numbers in the data set, and then count the numbers in the data set, and the number of numbers in the data set is n. Let's demonstrate it. First, we add 56 plus 35 plus 45 plus 67, plus 12, plus 24, plus 48, plus 55, plus 58, plus 30. These are all the numbers in the data set, all over 10. Because if you will count how many numbers are there or how many data are there in the set, there are 10 numbers. Simply, this is just finding the average. So the answer is 430 over 10. And our mean is 43. That is our final answer. Our second measure of central tendency is the median. The median is the middle score for a set of data that has been arranged in order of magnitude. In order to calculate the median, 
we first need to rearrange that data into order of magnitude, that is from smallest first. Our median mark is the middle mark. It is usually denoted by x tilde. Let's have an example. Find the median of the following data set. The numbers in our data set are 65, 55, 89, 56, 35, 14, 56, 55, 87, 45, and 92. First, we find the least number, that is 14. When I was studying statistics in college, this is what I used to do so that I will not confuse myself which number or numbers I have already included in my list. I cross the numbers out once I have already listed them down. So first, the least number is 14. We cross out 14 and write it in our list. Next is 35. Next, 45. Next, we have 255, so we can cross them out all at once and then write two number 55s. Next is 56. Since we also have two 56, we can cross them out all together and then write two 56. Next is 65. Next is 87. Then 89. And the greatest number is 92. Cross it out and then write it. Now, you can check your second set if it is the same numbers in the first set by counting the numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We have 11 numbers in the data set and it matches with our original data set. Now that we have arranged all the numbers from least to greatest, we have to find the middle mark. Which number is located in the middle? If you are kind of advanced in numbers, you can just think of it like you know that there are 11 numbers in the data set divided by 2, that's 5.5 and the sixth number is the middle mark. But if you were going to confuse yourself using that method, you can use this method. We remove two numbers first one number from the leftmost portion and one number from the rightmost portion. And we do it continuously until we end up with just one number. And that number is 56. That is our median, 56. If the total numbers in the data set is an odd number, again, an odd number is a number that cannot be equally divided by 2. This is the simplest way to find the median. But what if the total numbers in the data set is even? Let's try another example. We have the data set. We still follow the same procedure. That is, we arrange the numbers from least to greatest. First, 14. Second, 35. Third, 45. 4th is 55 and 5th is also 55. So we write them down. 6th is 56 and 7th is also 56. Write them down. Next is 65. That's the 8th number. 87 is the 9th number. 89 is the 10th number. Now we know that we have 10 numbers in the data set. And 10 is an even number. We proceed to the second procedure, that is, we remove two numbers, one from the leftmost portion and one from the rightmost portion. Then, we continue doing it until we end up with two numbers. The two numbers are 55 and 56. Now, how can we find the median? It's just simply adding 55 and 56 all over 2. And our median is 55 Point five. That's our final answer. Please click the subscribe button and bell button for notifications. Thank you. Our third measure of central tendency is the mode. The mode is the most frequent score in our data set. 
Sometimes it is considered as the most popular option. It is usually denoted by M O. Example, find the mode of the following data set. We have these numbers. If you can notice, our data set is arranged from least to greatest. I strongly advise if you are not really good at spotting numbers right away by just glancing at it, you have to arrange it from least to greatest. But I also have to take note that if you can just spot the most frequently showed data in just one look, you don't have to arrange them from least to greatest because we are just looking for the most frequent appearing data. Now let's start with 3. 3 appeared twice, 6 appeared once, 9 appeared once, 16 appeared thrice, 27 appeared twice, 37 appeared once, and 48 appeared once. Now, what is the most frequent appearing data? It is 16. And 16 is our mode. And that is our final answer. This data set is unimodal because one data appears most in the set. Next, let's have another example. Let's have this set of data. 3 appears thrice, 9 appears once, 16 appears thrice, 27 appears twice, 37 appears once, 48 appears once. Now if you have noticed, 3 and 16 both appeared thrice. So we have two modes, that is 3 and 16. This type of data is bimodal because two data appears most in the set. And it is also multimodal because there is more than one mode. Let's have another example. Three appears three times. Nine appears once. Sixteen appears three times. Twenty-seven appears three times. And forty-eight appears once. Three appears three times, 16 appears three times, and 27 appears three times. Now we have three modes, that is 3, 16, and 27. This type of example is trimodal, where three data appears most in the set. And also it is multimodal because we have more than one mode. Let's have our last example. 3, 6, 9, 16, 27, 37, and 48. All of the data appeared once, which means we don't have a mode. So the answer is no mode because all numbers occur once. Now to sum it up, we have three measures of central tendency. First is the arithmetic mean or the average. Second is the median or the middle score. And third is the mode, which is the most frequent appearing data. And that's the end of our lesson about measures of central tendency. In our next lesson, we are going to talk about shapes of distribution, which is going to dictate which measure of central tendency is more appropriate to use in this type of data. So stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please click the subscribe button and the bell button for notifications. I hope you have learned a lot for this video. Thank you for watching.